Good afternoon, Bloomington. It is Friday at 3.02 p.m. You're listening to WIUX LP Bloomington, and this is Growing Pains, the show where we do a lot of cool things, including interviewing local artists. I'm joined by not one, but three people in the studio today, and this is not even the first and only band that we're going to hear from. Um, But for now, we are joined in the studio by the Stratospheres. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having us back. Oh, of course. Welcome back. Repeat offenders, my favorite. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Making an example out of us. Yes. Ooh. uh, (laughs) You guys joined us previously back in November um, after the release of your first song, Fall Apart. Now we are here a week after the release of your sophomore song, Breathe You In. So it's very exciting. Super excited to give it a listen, give it a a little talk through. Um, And just for the listeners, the Stratospheres are not the only one to be to be on the show today. Street Pennies is coming on around 3.30, so we'll get to hear they de- their debut single, which is really exciting. Um, but we're here now to talk about you guys. Um, so a couple of things have, I don't know, changed, happened since you were last on the show. Uh, most notably, in my mind, Bluebird gig, Bishop gigs. Yep. Um, so yeah, just tell us like what you've been... Actually, I, I know that I know who you are, and maybe repeat listeners would know who you are, but just a quick intro of who's here, and then we'll get into the questions. So, uh, my name is Max Scott. I am the rhythm guitarist and lead singer. My name is Duncan. I am the bassist and backup singer. My name is Brayden. I'm the drummer, and I do not sing. <laughs> <laughs> Yet we are also we do, unfortunately are missing our fourth member, Jimmy. Today he could not be in attendance, but Jimmy is our other guitar player and is here in spirit and mind and body and soul. <laughs> Uh, yes, Jimmy, we miss you, but that's okay, because he's around WAX enough anyways, so, um... <laughs> Head engineer. <laughs> Head engineer, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, talking about the the gigs that I just mentioned, what have you guys been up to since November? Uh, yeah, so those, the, the Bluebird and Bishop gigs were pretty, uh, I'd say, big, big momentum for us. We'd been... F- fiending for a bluebird <laughs> show since we kind of formed the group mm-hmm. um so it was uh really exciting to play that we were in opening we were in the opening slot for violet hour thank you violet hour for letting us mm-hmm. hop on the bill with you guys that was a very uh kind of last minute thing we got the text uh like a week or so out from the show because i think crazy. i think someone like maybe they had a band and they had to drop or something and they had to find someone but we're very thankful that they um let us join them for that show. Yeah, and of course, we love supporting Mindfully Blind. Well, yeah, at the, uh, at Bishop the Bishop. Show. Yep, they, Mindfully Blind are we're big fans. Are also <laughs> our like our best friends. We love them so much. Yeah, love supporting them. They played a great set, and we loved opening th- opening for them. And uh, Naman Naman. Naman Naman from uh, they're from West Lafayette. Uh, Fort, Wayne. So. Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne. Sorry, yeah, Fort so Wayne northern, m- more northern Indiana. Mm-hmm. They are. They put on quite the show yeah, for anyone really that cool. is listening and wants to go see the most energetic show they'll <laughs> they'll put a hundred and ten thousand percent into everything to do for 10 people mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. very awesome to they'll watch glued to the stage the whole time yeah they yeah i've seen them they played at a wix event last year and they were crazy to watch yeah mm-hmm. we're they like, go insane these guys um that's very cool a cool bunch of bands that you've played with um I'm not going to say that I I attempted to get into the Bluebird show, but I might have. And I didn't get the chance to see you, but mm. still very cool that you guys got the chance to play um, at that venue. Um, yeah, we're here today, though, because you released your sophomore single, Breathe You In, last week. Um, before we give it a little listen, talk about you know what it means, recording process, what can you say about this? I love this song. Yeah, we love it, too. It was, it was one of the kind of early... I guess earlier ideas that we had, and we're uh, I'm I'm just very glad that we were able to kind of fle- we were able to actually flesh it out and make it into mm-hmm. a full tune because mm-hmm. it was kind of a long process uh, from start to finish. But we can we can get into that later. We're just very happy that it's a, <laughs> that it's a song, and we all we're all we all love it, and we yeah. hope everyone else who listens to it loves it as much as we do. It's definitely a personal favorite, I think, from the band, mm-hmm. and uh, it was also the first one we recorded at Primary, and that yeah. was just a, a really special day for us all yeah. together at, at there with uh, our wonderful engineer and mix engineer, Matt Teeden. Yeah, we can uh, we'll, we can, we can <laughs> get into all that in a second and go further in depth, but yeah, very happy that the song uh, is out in the world and everyone can go go listen to it as many times as they like. Yeah, it's not a radio exclusive, uh, believe it or not. But no, it's out in the world. Imagine if it was, though. Imagine, ooh. treat it like high art. 
Maybe <laughs> next time. Then we can get all the, the Bloomington listeners. Yeah. I like yeah. that. That would be a lot of work, though, for just little growing pains. But <laughs> um, Max, can you tell me a little bit about the production of the song? If I don't ch- chime in as much, it's because I'm trying to download the proper audio yeah, version of it. Yeah, that's totally okay. I'm uh, uh, sorry that we're having these uh, problems, but we can get through it. It'll be totally fine. Um, so Breathe You In started... Um, as the kind of intro guitar riff that we'll hear in a second. Uh, I'd had that like... I had that since... That came out, or that kind of was written at the same time that um, Fall Apart kind of became a thing. Those two kind of came up at the same time, but Mm. Breathe You In took a lot more renditions to kind of get it right. Uh, it was originally a song called Square One, um, kind of had the same lyrics, some of the same lyrics as in the chorus, but mm-hmm. when I brought it to the band, we realized that we had four songs that started with the letter S. <laughs> oh. um, so yeah. It was such a dash. Four, four of our six songs, and our band name is, has the letter S in it, so we were like, it's got it. It's that has to change. So we re- reworked the chorus, and once we reworked the, once I, once we reworked the chorus and had the, the, the Breathe You In, I guess line written it the chorus came really easily and then uh just kind of building the verses and uh I think uh Duncan was definitely uh a big part of kind of making the song what it is cuz when I kind of wrote the song I just had very basic parts that just bas- that mostly just followed the guitars and stuff mm. um but then Duncan came in and laid down his his sauce on it, <laughs> and it. Uh, no, I remember that. That was in your room, right? Yeah, it was in my room. And as soon as you worked, I was like, "This is like this is just what it, it needed. Great. It feels really good." It was one of those moments where it just kind of like I was just just going for it, and suddenly it came together really really quickly mm-hmm. in that moment, and I was like, "Oh, oh god, oh god, but this is really good. This, <laughs> this is, is good. Really yeah, good. this is a song." No, I love it, and it sounds very much in line with like fall apart. Like it, it's very mm-hmm. much the same vein. Um, and I loved, I like was looking at your inspirations and stuff beforehand in the um, Space Jam's playlist. And it's, it definitely, it all makes sense. It all, it sounds very much like you guys. Yeah. Um, that was Braden's idea. That was, yeah. Brayden, Brayden's kind of the brains behind our, our, I guess, Spotify, social media appeal and look. And he kind of came up with the idea of having the Space Jam's playlist slash mm-hmm. like all of our individual playlists that everyone can kind of, everyone can listen to and and get uh get a kind of more of a feel of what we're what we're about and what we are inspired by. Yeah, I'm a marketing genius. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um revealed higher brain in guys. Simply true. He does that full time. Yeah, if you friend. guys want you guys want good stuff, just go to Braden. <laughs> Yeah, I remember like he asked me to, to get compile my list of songs. And I I was in like I was done within like five minutes. I the crea- like, oh, yeah. I have to do this. This is gonna be so much fun. The creator <laughs> of good things, Braden Janes. Braden Janes. Yeah, I love poking around and seeing like where your inspirations differed. Um, mm. But I think I mean I think right now we have a working MP3. I'm gonna give it another shot. Um, thank you for working with me on that. Hopefully this is breathe you in the stratospheres. Fingers crossed. If not, we'll be asking some more questions and I'll figure it out. Um, breathe you in. Enjoy. Singing me out on a black braid tether, rope is worn, but it always gets reused. Running together, pulling ahead, you're the one that I can't lose. If you can read the future and read my mind, you and I are only wasting time. Cause I'm just breathing you in the same way. Nothing better than egos 
Radio Woo! again. Oh, yeah. Second New radio tune. debut. It's New good. Tune. Go listen again. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, t- don't turn this off, but, you know, once the hour is up, you know what you should be listening to. Right. I'm sure. Um, we were giving, not me, but y'all were giving a lot of props to um, one Teton. Mr. Matthew Teton. Matthew Teton. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's our good friend, uh, a wonderful <laughs> collaborator, producer, mixer, engineer, mm-hmm. really good. Just kind of t- everything he touches turns to gold, I think. Yeah. He's a really big um, collaborator with a lot of people in the kind of local Bloomington music scene. So he does all he does all the Stratosphere stuff. He did the new Westhead album. Go listen to the new Westhead album. Does He's yeah. doing the new uh, Citruses album that's going to be kind of starting to roll out and here uh, really, really soon. Class Action. Too. And Class Action, <gasps> yeah. Class Action's oh. got a got a new single coming out in yes. the, the coming weeks. Very exciting. So he's a really big uh, collaborator, but the the three of us kind of became friends with him um, over kind of last uh, last summer, like summer of 2022. Uh, and he just, I think he really understands the kind of music that we write really mm-hmm. well, like that mm-hmm. super high energy pop rock style Mm -hmm. so he really knows how to kind of cater uh to that and so he's done he's done the first he did the fall apart mix he did breathe you in and he's doing Mm -hmm. all of our other songs that we're going to be sending to him shortly so he's like our main mixer and he's mixing all of our tunes but this one specifically breathe you and he was the main engineer at primary yeah so he the one time he was in town and we got him in yeah uh, into the studio and it man it just made everything teton yeah teton lives out and works and lives out in uh los angeles now uh, but we recorded this song way back, like right before Thanksgiving. Uh, we booked out a day at Primary Sound, mm. um, and he was able to be in there as like kind of our head engineer slash executive producer, mm-hmm. along with our two good friends, uh, Luca and Jack, Shout-outs. as wonderful engineers because they just know how to run that studio like a, like crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, he he really helps he like helped take the song from being just kind of a a, a demo with lyrics to like an actual song because we we were definitely changing around a lot of like teen's very uh very much into changing a lot of like with every take changing something about the guitar mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or changing something about the bass tone or, mm-hmm. or swapping you know you know different snare drums out or different drum drum mics or whatever he's very much like keeping everything making sure that everything in the song is a little bit different mm-hmm. just so it doesn't get um there's just a, as enough uh enough variety mm-hmm. amongst everything very true yeah cool did you have something to say Braden, about that uh tangentially related 
Um, but uh, speaking to the the quality of Matt Teen's work and working off of what you were saying, Max, with um, <clears throat> um, his tendency to change things out, swap things out, keep things fresh is, I think, a really important sort of integral part of our sound and his sound as an engineer. Um, and I think it's it sort of is a, is a credit to why our stuff sounds um, as good as it does without sounding I guess generic. Mm-hmm. Um, True, yeah. So I, you know, obviously we are at no shortage of nice things to say about um, Matt and the wonderful work that he does for us and the people in Bloomington. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Shout out. <laughs> um, very cool. And this is a, a different set of people that, that helped from the last one. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, it was Antonio and Dan, right? Yeah. Who, were, mm-hmm. who did mm-hmm. fall apart. Mm-hmm. Cool. How do you feel like, Maybe. Antonio and Dan from Mindfully Blind. Go listen, great. To Mindfully Blind. Go listen to Mindfully oh. Blind. Catch them at the reef tonight. <laughs> Have we mentioned that we love Mindfully Blind here? Yeah, um, Mindfully Blind. How do you feel just like, you know, as you continue to make music, um, do you like just working with different people? Or are you hoping to like lock in on a, a crew that will help you with future stuff? Um, I th- how, yeah. I think, especially right now, the importance of collaborating and trying to bring in as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. Um is something that I definitely want to I as and I think everyone else in the band can agree with just getting it like as many people as possible to come in and do their thing on our songs. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that I personally learned from our good friend Max DeFrisco, mm-hmm. uh, who I'm sure everyone at WIUX and who listens to Growing Pains knows and loves <laughs> as Westhead. Um, he had what was it forty different collaborators on his new record 20 plus 20 was it 20 or 40 it was 40 yeah, it was it around 40 yeah, yeah 40 he had 40 like different people either just contribute contributing like small parts to songs or just being a part of like an ensemble or whatever it may be but that's something i definitely want to i and i keep saying i we want to um take forward and kind of learn from that mm-hmm. and bring more people into do what they're really good at and mm-hmm. help grow the project as a whole. And speaking to the teams that you mentioned, it's par- partly part of it's been a uh, location based. Mm-hmm. So we we know not only we're we good friends with Jack and Luca, we know how great they are in primary. So that's, yeah. that's one major reason why they were on our team for that. And then I'm um, working in, in Joshi with Antonio and Dan. They not only get our sound really well, mm-hmm. and they also have they have really great. Um, uh, ideas about tone, about uh, changing aesthetics, and this and that. They they guide us really well as they have been in the same position as us. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And you. everyone's just really good friends, which yeah, helps friends. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just always a good hang, no matter who you're with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's nice. Well, let's see if we can get you forty people. Let's get you fifty. Let's, oh, let's oh, top 50. the West Forty-one. Head. 41. <laughs> yeah. To at least 20 points. We're going to have Natalie Ingalls on our new album. It's going to be our 41st collaborator. I will, like, whistle or whatever you need me break to do. The, yeah, we'll break the record, yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Um, yeah, funny. Yeah, if you're listening and you want to be involved in the Stratosphere's Project, they're recruiting right now. Please hit air. us up. <laughs> get you in. Um, yeah, awesome. I, I have, this is not super related to the music itself, but I love the song um, cover artwork. Can I ask who yes. has done those? Yes, absolutely. So that, is, that is my my brother Hallie. He uh, he's done both our cover arts now, okay. uh, and we'll he, be doing our cover arts for our future releases. Get, yeah, we're gonna get him on at least one, if not a few more, after this. Yeah, that those, that's been a really fun project uh, working this through with him. He's uh, he's been a uh, artist and a graphic designer for a very, very, very long time, mm-hmm. and so I knew like the minute we really needed some like good professional art to go straight to him. Um, yeah, he 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 takes in ideas really well and he's really great at just creating something that's exactly what you wanted yeah uh, our, our first idea with fall apart was like um we kind of like our the main like log line was like our, our sticker on space sort of so it's like we're taking our own planet and and lays like scotch slowly, taping it uh, yeah, yeah. To, to, yeah. To, to space itself and then the second one um we, we we had like a moon idea which became like that little postage stamp which was his entire idea yeah, which was great genius idea. great idea mm-hmm. it like super like, cool different strips of 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 like paper to make it look like it, was, like, it has like a two on it as yeah. like our, mm-hmm. our second single, second single. Oh, he's just a genius with these little details the longer you stare at it the more you'll pick out different things he's uh-huh. great with textures and colors he's just He's just a talent. Yeah, it's they're they're really well done. Um, very beautiful. Well, speaking of you know like future 
stuff that he could design for. What can you tell me about the future songs that he would be designing? Right. For? So the past couple of weeks, we've kind of been putting our heads down and, and getting our. We have uh, currently four more songs on deck. Whoa. Um, as mm-hmm. uh, as single releases, um, I'm actually heading into the studio after the show to wrap up vocals on the last song. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll definitely wow. be rolling out some more singles. The turnaround will definitely be a lot shorter than the one between <laughs> Fall Apart and Breathe You In. Okay. We yeah. actually, uh, I meant to tell Duncan and Brayden this, but you're going to hear it live on air. I just Whoa. got the master back for our next single, Stand Still. Um, so. We'll be out of uh, hopefully sometime in May. Awesome. Um, Awesome. It'll be it's it's I think if Breathe You In isn't like the band favorite, I think Stand Still among the four of us is mm. uh it's my personal favorite just because it's the one we end our shows with every night and it's it's mm. just super fun to go wild at the end of it and mm. it's just a super big energetic song that we we want people to hear a real recording of and mm. not necessarily keep it to to live performances only. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, Stand Still is a song that um, I sort of wrote, like, actually a couple of years ago, like, even before I was in the band. Like, it, it, was, it sounds completely different the way I wrote it mm-hmm. a long time ago. We mm-hmm. sort of, like, fed it into the strat- stratospheres. <laughs> into the fire. filter, yeah. You know? <laughs> into the... And, it, and it came out like this this really fun, huge, this epic anthemic song. anthemic song, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've been ending our, sh- our shows with it since, and it's it's going to be great. That's yeah, awesome. Very excited for that one. Wow. And the, the ones to come after that. Yeah. They're all going to be... Very, very good. <laughs> well, exciting. So fun to have stuff to look forward to. Um, I remember you mentioned Stand Still on our last show because you mm. had, I think, started recording it at that point. But, mm-hmm. um, well, really cool to to be able to look out for some new stuff from you guys. Um, but congrats on the stuff already released. Radio In is awesome. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm really glad you guys could join me for this show, this beautiful Friday, not stormy Friday. This beautiful, awesome um, Friday <laughs> in April. You guys can follow the stratospheres at this was a, a fun point of conversation last time too at the dot the stratosp- period stratospheres mm-hmm. yeah exactly. it's yeah. not perfect but it's not the perfect <sighs> one word handle Whatever. but we'll we it. did our best we'll get it <laughs> yeah we'll get it one day <laughs> well yes after hey after stand still comes out I yeah i'll give it to you totally um, Yes, thank you all so much for tuning in so far. I'm going to um, hit this little break by playing a song from a band called Negative Glow based in Bloomington. They just put out their debut EP and it's called Dissolve, but we're about to have the Street Pennies on. After that, the Stratospheres, thank you again for coming on. Thank you so much for having us back. Of course. We look forward to to seeing you on this show again soon. Oh, yes. We we will be back. (laughs) We'll be back. (laughs) Third time's a charm. Good afternoon, Bloomington. Welcome back to Growing Pains, the show where we do a lot of cool things, including interviewing local artists. It is 3.31 p.m. I am joined in the studio by the Street Pennies. Say hello. Hi. Hi. (laughs) Another group of repeat offenders. Um, This time we have the full band on, which is exciting. Lucas, you were not able to join us last time, Um, but you were here. All of you were here in early November uh, in collaboration with Working Title Magazine, which is really exciting. Um, But now we're here and we actually have some music to play. What the heck, Um, which is very exciting. Your debut single, The One, just released. Congrats. Big deal, big deal. Thank you. you. Of course. Um, I Yeah, we're going to listen to it. We're going to talk about it, just talk about you guys as a band. Um, I know who you all are, but for the listeners, would you please just do rapid fire introductions, because there are seven, Um, and then we can get into the questions, starting with you, Ollie. Yeah, my name's Ollie. I'm one of the vocalists. Uh, my name's Nate. I'm the uh, saxophonist. My name is John. I'm a guitarist. My name's Jack. I play the bass. I'm Lucas. I sing and I play guitar. I'm Mike. I play the keys. Uh, I'm Mason. I currently play drums. Woo. Well, welcome to the show, all of you. See, I said seven. I wasn't lying. <coughs> um, yeah, we're kind of squished in the studio, but it's working out great. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, before we take a listen to the one, um, just tell us a little bit about this song what are its origins when was it born um yeah um i guess okay i guess i can tell tell the story uh so we had studio time booked for a little bit and we just needed some ideas of songs to work on mm-hmm. and i remember one rehearsal one day i got like a a new pedal off of facebook marketplace and i was like messing with the volume of this pedal and i made it sound all crunchy on my bass mm-hmm. and i hit the i hit that bass line that you'll hear in the song and um, 
just to mess around with it, just because it was kind of funny to play something really loud, and they were like, oh my god, we like that, we should make that into a song. I was like, no, you're joking. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. It's too hated, silly, hated, it's too hated, silly. Hated think we're joking. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then we just kind of, I, I think we have a voice memo somewhere that's like 20 minutes long of us just trying to figure that song out, but uh, that's pretty much the crux of it. Yeah, and then it really got developed when we went into the studio, where we actually like came up with the structure for it. Lucas and I wrote out the lyrics for it. We had like messed around with some things, but like nothing. I don't think anything was like actually concrete. We just like came to our producer and we we're like, "This is our idea. Mm -hmm. This is the like demo that we have. Mm -hmm. But like, let's turn it into an actual song." It wasn't an actual song when we went in. It was more of just like a prolonged jam, but. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, I, we'll hear right away how integral the bass is to the song. <laughs> um, yeah, we were at your, I was at your album, not album, song release party last night. And everyone was like, dang, that bass. <laughs> so um, we'll hear it. Okay, awesome. I feel like that's enough introduction for the song. I'd love to talk more about recording it, writing it, all that jazz. But I feel like we should just give it a listen. Yeah. Um, so just in time for the radio debut, this is the one, Street Pennies. Enjoy. Never be the one 
And we're back. That was the one by Street Pennies. Killer. So fun to listen to. Um, I especially love it because of it like features you all at least once very prominently. You get you get the keys, you get the sax, the bass is throughout, the drums are amazing. Um, I'm just wondering like when you vocals guitar um when you were writing this song like how intentional was that to get all of your voices like clearly coming through on the track um it was very intentional i would say um i think i like had one line of lyrics Mm -hmm. written before we went into the studio yeah i don't think there's anything else done Mm -hmm. but i think that was kind of like the focus of that song and like that's how we do a lot of like covers and the other songs we've written as well as like especially vocally we usually try to split them up yeah and then like share parts as well just because like I think me and Ollie's voices mesh together really well mm-hmm. and we really try to focus on like spotlighting everyone yeah. at, at at a certain time mm-hmm. yeah I just think it's like I don't know it's a part of our like foundation mm-hmm. also just making sure that we're highlighting each other because we know like when we're great it's when we're all doing great and so this kind of the song like I don't think after vocals I don't think anything was like super intentionally like oh we got a spotlight so and so it was just like oh this would sound so sick if you were like right here and like this person was right there so mm-hmm. it was like a natural it was like intentional and then it just led into being very natural yeah tell me a little bit more like I feel like going into the studio with an idea of a song and a direction but not quite sure what you're going to end up with but knowing that you are going to record it at the end is like a little bit I don't know stressful baby um how did you feel just like whoever wants to speak on like how you felt going into it whether there was a pressure there or it was more of just like a time for discovery uh, I was definitely, I think I was probably the most stressed of everyone in the group. <laughs> uh, I, I think we're all very chronic procrastinators, but I think it's it's to our benefit. But um, I don't know, I kind of enjoyed going in with just ideas because when you have such a, like, a big group, and I don't think any of us are like individually like super um, prolific songwriters, but like I think when we have a big group and we have an, a space where we're just kind of like focused and we're forced to hone in on um, whatever concept or idea we have. And, like, that studio that we were in, it was a perfect space because we were in Fort Wayne, and, like, we were just isolated from any distraction in the world and we were there <laughs> for five days. And, like, we had no excuse to not come up with some music. And um, I think it was actually to our benefit to, like, not go in there with a whole lot of developed ideas because then that allowed us to really work on those in the studio. Mm in a space that is comfortable and kind of isolated from the terrors of the rest of the world. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely think... I'm somebody who's, like, such a firm believer of, like, good things happen when you, like, allow space for it to happen. Um, And I really trusted our producer, Jason. Um, He worked on the Namby Pambies album, and their album is just one of, like, the most well-produced albums I've heard come out of, like, a local music group. Mm -hmm. Um... And going in knowing that we were in good hands and, like, having confidence in ourselves and just, like, being, like, okay, like, this is kind of an idea of what we want it to sound like. How can we, like, hone in on it and, like, make it something more than, like, what we thought Mm -hmm. it could possibly be? Because, like, yeah, there's seven of us, but, like, that can still be, like, a group think mindset. So, like, having that extra person who's just, like, out of his mind talented Mm -hmm. was like one of the most comforting things I came in just like excited and I was like wow we're coming in with like not a lot but we're gonna come out with like something that is so concrete and complete so it was like a weird combination of like stress but then also just like jittery excitement Mm -hmm. was there any was there ever any like an aha moment when you're like oh like we found the sounds and we're gonna run with it or is like I'm just thinking, like, when you're writing, like, somebody makes a part and you're like, okay, this is it. Like, this is the song. Uh, yeah, I remember, like, there were, it, that whole guitar solo, like, in the middle, that was almost, like, a sax solo at first. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we were jamming on it. Like, we were doing, like, practice runs of it. And John was just going crazy on, like, that <laughs> double time section. You know, I just kind of looked at each other like, nah, that's a guitar solo right there. Mm-hmm. And, like, I get comp- I've gotten multiple compliments from... Uh, friends that I've shown the song to, they're like, that guitar solo is crazy, man. Like, he's just going insane. 
Yeah, <laughs> one, one take John right there. He's just that guy. I don't know what to say. You know. <laughs> John, any thoughts about your guitar solo? Um, well, generally about the process of writing it, I thought it was cool coming in. Um, it was cool coming in with the ideas we had because I felt like we had a foundation, like we had something to build from um, or whittle down, depending how you looked at it. And the I guess we had three, really only three coming in. But um, we knowing what you were going to work with, what you were going to focus on, mm-hmm. while still having that freedom to actually create in the on the spot was perfect. And like... It was also, uh, for several of us, our first times being in a setting like that, mm. in a professional studio setting. So just being able to dial in our individual sounds the way that we really wanted to contribute them to the uh, overall sound of each song and of the group was pretty awesome. And uh, that, you know, that was kind of part of what it took to lead into something like that solo was just finding a sound that really worked well with what the rest of the band was creating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, um, I, I think there were very few parts that we individually came in that we recorded. Um, I think I had like one part that I knew I was gonna play and I actually played it mm-hmm. on guitar and drums. Usually um, something got changed, Jason would be like, hey, what about this? And that ended up being what we recorded. So I think a lot of it was, like you have an idea. For me, there wasn't like one aha moment. It was a bunch of little aha moments of like this will be good in the song so um yeah just being open to changing stuff because i think for us it's it's hard to come in with like a super fleshed idea and then stick with that usually something's getting changed so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um for the the songwriters of the lyrics talk a little bit more about working with each other to create this like you know cohesive song what does it mean to you get some inspiration behind the lyrics i think lucas and i have a lot of resentment in our hearts <laughs> <laughs> not towards each other but no, if you like no. pay attention to the lyrics i think both of us took out our anger a little bit in those <laughs> lyrics yeah i mean i just i i would say i always draw from some experiences in lyrics but just kind of like developing those experiences into like something that everyone can understand and relate to. And I would say we like accomplished our goal with that pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, I came in with, like I said, like two lyrics that kind of like summated what I wanted, Mm -hmm. what I thought the like song sounded like musically. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think Ollie, Ollie wrote her wrote her verse pretty quickly, I mm-hmm. think, in the studio. It was a lot of just like building off of what Lucas already wrote, um, and just like tapping into those emotions a little bit. Mm-hmm. It was like a little bit, like I not gonna lie, I like had a hard time that day in the studio because I was like, wow, the pressure is on. Yeah. Um, but I feel really good about like what came out of it. It was just, it was a nice release, Mm -hmm. if anything. I don't think I'm, like, that angry of a person on, like, the day-to-day, but it was, like... (laughs) Yeah, we just... It was nice to, like, tap into it. Charged all of my ego and anger into that song. Yeah. So the other songs are nicer. Yeah, the other songs... (laughs) Yeah, our next, like, single that we're releasing, it's, like, it makes me cry because I'm, like, oh, like, oh. That was, like, a different side. But, like, this is... This is the more spurned, angry boss one yeah (laughs) coming in hot uh, (laughs) for your first release talk a little bit more so you recorded the one at um off the cuff Mm -hmm. and then is the next song that we're gonna hear also recorded during that same session yeah we'll be doing we had three songs out of this one session Mm -hmm. we'll be going back in june to off the cuff to work with jason Moore to record like what what did we say like four or five more Mm -hmm. whatever three or four i don't know whatever we can churn out Mm -hmm. who knows do you think that you will be approaching the new session in June the same way that you have you went into this one? Do you feel like you learned anything about yourselves in the studio? Um, was that, did I hear a no? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to talk about that? Well, I feel like... Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> let me... It fell. Um, yeah. Um, is it still working? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sick. Um, I learned a lot about myself in the studio. Um, I... 
uh yeah so yeah it's, it's studio 10 hour days very hard um sure. so yeah we did five so i think we did 40 to 50 hours um straight back to back um that is intense i think for anyone yeah. um <clears throat> and i think we each individually dealt with it a different way <clears throat> um so i think there were like certain days that were better than others mm-hmm. also food is really important <laughs> Um, mm. so, so there were some like local places and then we had some like vegetable trays and stuff and then we brought some food. Um, <laughs> but what about musically? <laughs> <laughs> musically, how are we approaching this? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. I, I'm not gonna, I mean, like, <laughs> he has nothing to I, say about I that. Think, I think, I know what you're saying. <sighs> I don't know. It's hard. Like, how do you, I, it's hard for us to like quantify that just because it's like, I think we, Going into when we went to the studio the first time, I had so many other ideas for like what it was going to look like a month before. Mm-hmm. I think we all did. So we have ideas, but it's hard to say we're going in with the style, this type of emotion, stuff like that. Right. Just because it's far out. I would definitely say, too, there was a lot of unknowns going in the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't necessarily know what the process looked like 100%. Um, didn't necessarily know, like how, you know, adjusting and refining things would work very well. Right. Um, and just, like, how much time that would take. So I think there's a lot less unknowns going in uh, for our next session. But I'm just more excited now to see what we can throw out there now that we don't have to kind of overcome any kind of rookie hardships of mm-hmm. figuring things out. I, th- I think it's your terms of content, too. Um, I mean, it's getting a little tough because we're kind of going through, like, life changes related to, like, graduation and moving. Um between now and then so there's a lot of like individual work on writing stuff like i'm sitting on a mountain of voice memos right now (laughs) i know john has a bunch of stuff too um and we like figuring out ways to adapt those into songs for the band which is kind of what we did last time but i think there may be a little more emphasis on like individual working this time just to uh i don't know just to sprout from there once we get to the studio <clears throat> yeah. Talk, I mean, a little bit more about, you don't have to get into the specifics, but just in terms of, like, changes within that are coming up. And do you feel, like, a sense of urgency within the Street Pennies to, like, get stuff out or get stuff done? Or is it just more, like, enjoying your time as a band? Ollie has something to say. Well, yeah. So I'm I'm the one who's graduating. Mm. Um, Mason's moving up to Chicago the end of April. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be going home. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah, so there's definitely, like, we have one show at the Bluebird. We have a couple shows throughout the summer, some things at the Hi-Fi. So, like, we have things coming, but, um, like, there is, like, some sense of urgency of it being, like, okay, like, this is probably, maybe if we come back next semester for like a show to like do our ep and stuff but like this might be our last bluebird show Mm -hmm. as a band um but like we don't know like it's just it's hard it's weird um they're like they're smiling and goofing right now and it's like really distracting but like there's definitely like a little bit of urgency and knowing that like it might be really coming to an end and so just really wanting something like tangible Mm -hmm. like I just want to be able to like come to my family and like my friends who aren't from Bloomington and being like okay here's the EP like this is what I've been working on for the past like year and a half like this is where all my time has gone like that is kind of like what is my urgency of just being like there's like lots of memories and photos and like things like that to like showcase for our time that we've had together but like having something tangible is like really important to me so Mm -hmm. yeah proof of life yeah proof of life well said any others feel the same way differently Uh, yeah go ahead mike yeah i was gonna say like since we started and like after like our first couple rehearsals and like our first show i've i've just had in my head like we gotta make like originals together like Mm -hmm. you know we I've experienced like the Bloomington scene around here and like I I definitely hype us up like a lot. I feel like <laughs> I'd be the number one fan if I wasn't in the band, but like we're all I feel like we're all extremely talented and like not just musicians but like creatively, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I'm very happy with where we're going right now, like not just a single, not just like three songs, but like we're going back like for an EP type mm-hmm. stuff, you know, like I feel like 
I feel like if we weren't like a college band and like we like made it official, like we'd be we'd be global, you know, we'd be universal, you know. Mike, I listened back to our interview last time. You said that exact same <laughs> no thing. You did. Shot. No, you That's have crazy. big you have big aspirations, which is <laughs> yes. incredible. I mean, what That's can I say? I'm consistent. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think if we like could stay together, good things could happen. Yeah. It's just it's just it's that's just, just not our timeline out, like, how to do yeah. those next steps because yeah. like it really is like dependent on like where mason and i are going because everybody else is going to be in bloomington mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah let me make sure this doesn't fall again um i think another thing is also prioritizing differently what the next year is going to look like so i think for a lot of this past year it's been like shows and like a consistent output of like content whether it be shows or like working towards originals um, but we had a conversation, I th- think a, a rehearsal or two ago about what the next year was going to look like and like prioritizing what shows we're going to play if we're going to play them. Cause like, we're not going to be playing as bluebird as much, obviously part of us aren't going to live here. So, um, I think those shows probably more out of town from Bloomington shows, mm-hmm. um, whether that be breaking into Chicago, continuing to play in Indianapolis, um, Fort Wayne, maybe stuff like that. So I think there's a different priority too with mm-hmm life moving Mm -hmm. just uh, like what that's gonna look like yeah like moving street pennies away from being like party band esque to like actually being able to put out our like music and play a show that's just our music Mm -hmm. because don't get me wrong i love can't take my eyes off of you as much as the next person (laughs) but i could go a very long time without singing that yeah Yeah. john did you have a thought about that no, nah, I was actually, I was going to speak on that same kind of idea about moving into more original content, stuff that's uh, more true to us, but mm-hmm. now a couple of my bandmates have captured that. Yeah, beautiful. Um, well, it's cool to have this out now and to know that you'll have, you'll capture another part of your life in June when you all go in and record again. Um, unfortunately, we've reached the end of our time together i know (laughs) how 25 minutes flies by when you're on the radio um i just want to thank you all again for coming in for the second time really great to listen to your song really looking forward to hearing the other singles the ep um yeah thank you all so much for coming in hanging out they came guys shout out street pennies i told them the wrong time and they hung out for an hour in the studio beforehand so they're real um for that (laughs) they were real for that um Yes, but thank you guys. This thank has been you. Growing Thanks Pains. For having us. Thank you. Guys. Yeah, of course. We love Growing Pains. I love mm-hmm. you guys. Um, yeah, Growing Pains love Street Pennies. I will be back again next week for my final show of the semester with uh, the one and only Six Foot Blonde to listen through their EP. So that is exciting. Yeah. Um, it's very exciting. That's so. Thank you for tuning in this week. I'll see you next week, Friday at 3 p.m. Have a great little five weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye.